I'm Kay and I'm a late bloomer. Last week, I published a blog on my website, latebloomershow.com, entitled Greens Too Pretty to Eat. And I got a mild tongue lashing in the comments from my online garden friends upon learning that I don't always eat all the beautiful greens that I grow. <laughs> Here's what Patrick at One Yard Revolution had to say. When I heard that Kay doesn't eat her greens, I have to say I was surprised and concerned. They're so good for you and she grows such great greens, so why she wouldn't eat them, I don't know. So when she posted a picture to Google Plus of some of her greens with the caption, too pretty to eat, I saw that as an opportunity for a greens intervention. So uh, I said, Kay, you need to rethink this. Those greens aren't too pretty to eat. They look good enough to eat. Think of it that way. These greens look good enough to eat. I just hope I got through to her. So I decided to challenge myself to seven days of eating my greens. Check it out. <laughs> Loaded with nutrients like vitamin A and known for its antioxidant properties, bok choy is a cruciferous vegetable that is easy to prepare and enjoyable to eat. I sauteed garlic and ginger in hot rice bran oil for one minute. Add bok choy and soy sauce, cook two to three minutes or until the greens are wilted and the stalks are crisp but tender. I added miso at the end. Good. Day number one. Arugula is a pungent herb widely cultivated around the world and is rich in vitamin C and potassium. Is that gorgeous? In addition to the leaves, the flowers, seed pods, and seeds are all edible. I love the peppery flavor in salads. Here I squeezed my Meyer lemon over fresh arugula leaves with Valencia orange and blood orange sections, drizzled extra virgin olive oil, dropped in goji berries, and fresh cracked pepper, tossed and served. <laughs> A refreshing afternoon snack. Right. I planted a container of dwarf kale and thought the smaller, more tender leaves might be more palatable in a salad. It's recommended to massage kale leaves with olive oil, but I learned this time-saving trick from my son Walker. Massaged. I took my kale salad ingredients from Late Bloomer Show Facebook friends Martha Zook and Malia Blossom. Malia likes pears with kale, and Martha suggested the citrusy honey yogurt dressing. I added raw walnut pieces and pepper. Kale is super nutritious. Be sure to watch my Growing Parkway Kale episode when I went all out growing several varieties. I kept it simple on day four. Most people eat the root and discard the beet tops, but the leaves are the more nutrient-rich part of the vegetable. Packed with antioxidants, they're high in vitamins, minerals, low in fat, and cholesterol. The best way to deliver all that nutrition is fresh-picked and raw. 
As I was already making a supply of my green juice, I simply added beet tops, which makes it naturally sweet. I made up for the low calorie day four on day five. I've used this eggs Florentine recipe for 30 years, but always with spinach. I'm not growing spinach this winter, so I used chard. Slice off the leaves from the stem and save the stems for soup. Cut leaves into ribbons and add to a small amount of boiling water. Stir in leaves and cook till they wilt, about three minutes. Arrange leaves in a baking dish and create a hole for each serving. Carefully slide one egg into each hole. Make a roux of butter, flour, and milk, stirring constantly till thick. Gently spoon on cream sauce. Grate cheese over top and dust with nutmeg. Bake for 30 minutes in a 350 degree oven. Count the minutes till it's done. Prepare to feast yourself. I did. <laughs> thing. <laughs> the caloric intake was off the charts. My mother grew up eating turnip greens and cornbread and still enjoys eating them. I never learned to love them, but this was my first time growing turnips and they are an excellent source of vitamins, minerals, and fiber, so I put turnip greens in my seven-day challenge. Basically, you just take the stems off. And these are young leaves, so that's all I'm going to do. Just that and wash them. I simmered chunks of bacon for an hour before I added the turnip leaves, which I cooked for about a half an hour. While the greens were cooking, I whipped up some cornbread from my 30-year recipe, this time with artisan stone ground red cornmeal. Wow. I served it with my homegrown baby lima beans and had a southern style dinner. was the best cornbread I ever made. <laughs> All these recipes will be on my website in an accompanying blog. So make sure you subscribe to LateBloomerShow.com. Today is day seven and I'll be stir-frying sweet potato leaves, which I've never eaten, so this should be interesting. <laughs> Don Winterstein of the Orange County Organic Gardening Club gave me these sweet potato slips and said his wife preferred the greens to the roots. He couldn't remember the name. I added a few more leaves from my sweet potato plants sent from Renea Winchester in Georgia. So this is kind of a different kind of shape. So if anybody knows what this is, please let me know. A stir fry was a great opportunity to use my few asparagus stalks and fresh green garlic and cilantro leaves. Nothing is fresher than fresh picked. For a little heat, orange Thai chilies, which are quite small in March. So we've got our leaves washed and asparagus a little bit of ginger, green garlic, orange Thai chili, cilantro leaves, and miso. 
Let's get to work. Been slaving away in the kitchen for 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, all I can say is you need a lot of leaves. Look at that, they shrank. You can hardly see them. Okay, now for the taste. In a recent video, Martine at Organic's Best Urban Gardener stressed that you should grow what you're really going to eat. I took that to heart. So from now on, I'm going to grow what I eat and I'm going to eat what I grow. <laughs> if you enjoyed this episode, please give me a thumbs up and share with a friend. I'm Kay. I'm a late bloomer. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. slaving away in the kitchen <laughs> for 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, the food. Did you see her gobble up that arugula?